Welcome back to CBS This Morning, Saturday. The American Rescue Plan, which became law in March, was supposed to deliver billions of dollars in aid and loan forgiveness to the nation's underprivileged farmers. Instead, those funds are being held up by a federal lawsuit. The promise of aid that fails to materialize is all too familiar to many farmers of color, long subjected to discrimination in government programs. We went to Virginia to talk with a fourth-generation black farmer leading the call for change. John Boyd has been tilling this soil for the last three decades, land that's been in his family for a hundred years. My grandfather was able to raise 15 children on his farm. You say you're the classic case yes. of the black farmer. Classic case. Why? Many black farmers uh, were tied historically to the land, uh, either through uh, sharecropping or generational land. That's the way the blacks uh, did it, and, and we were old school farmers. These are our tobacco curing bonds. Boyd is president of the National Black Farmers Association, representing thousands of black farmers across the U.S. We farm with limited resources. Banks weren't lending us any money. USDA really dogged black farmers and poor processing time. We took 387 days to process a black farm loan request in, in less than 30 days to process a white farm loan request. In March, President Biden announced his plan to right that wrong, providing $4 billion in loan relief to socially disadvantaged farmers and ranchers in his $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan. This debt relief is designed to catch them up. We spoke to Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack in April about disparities in the last year alone. In the COVID relief packages that were announced prior to the rescue plan, uh, of those self-identified farmers who identified as white or black or, or Hispanic, black farmers received roughly $20 million in help through those COVID packages, white farmers received over five and a half billion dollars. And the reason for it is because they were able to grow over a period of time, over the, over the decades, able to fully utilize uh, the uh, full extent of USDA programs. Black farmers were not able to do that because of discrimination. But last week, a federal judge in Wisconsin halted those payments, saying the U.S. Department of Agriculture's use of race-based criteria in the administration of the program violates their right to equal protection under the law. It's one thing to help people because they themselves have been the victim of identifiable past discrimination. But it's a wholly other thing to hand out benefits or to grant the preference based solely on the color of one's skin. Rick Eisenberg is the president of the Wisconsin Institute of Law and Liberty, the firm representing 12 white farmers across nine states that challenge the policy. So you don't argue that systemic racism has perhaps disadvantaged black farmers in the past? Certainly there have been some farmers who have been, black farmers who have been discriminated against in the past. There was a lawsuit. The way to stop discriminating on the basis of race is to stop discriminating on the basis of race and not to think that there is some way that we can balance the scales um, by discriminating just a little bit. The USDA isn't backing down, telling CBS News, we respectfully disagree with this temporary order and will continue to forcefully defend our ability to carry out this act of Congress and deliver debt relief to socially disadvantaged borrowers. I wasn't aware that um, some farmers weren't receiving the same as other farmers. Cheryl Ash and her husband James are plaintiffs in the suit. They breed hogs in Jasper, Missouri. They're only about four days old. I didn't know that existed, but I think it doesn't matter what color of skin you have. If you're a farmer, you should be able to qualify and, and get those programs and those grants. Equality is best, especially from our government. At the turn of the last century, there were nearly one million black farmers in America. The USDA now says there are only 45,000 in a country of three million farmers. And less than 40% of them, 17,000, qualify for assistance. At the bottom, they would use old rocks from the farm. For Boyd, those numbers showcase decades of discrimination and disparity that he pledges he will fight to remedy. Well, let me say this. Uh, I'm going to die a farmer. 
I'm very optimistic about the future, but I want people to know that uh, it's not going to happen by itself. Well, the Department of Agriculture is going to answer the suit. They are uh, essentially advising borrowers to, to just move forward with their claims. But as we speak, there are some five other lawsuits that are already coming down the pike. Look, the big question here is whether or not these black farmers, farmers of color, should have a remedy for those years, decades of discrimination that the USDA acknowledges. There have been lawsuits, uh, but oftentimes they aren't fully paid out. And I think everybody agrees equality is best, as she said. There's exactly. just a question of how you actually get there. Right. And, and what was the inequality earlier, and right. how do you, can you make up for that? Look, it's tough. It's tough. It, it's not just when, this industry, but when certainly it's, here. When yeah. it's unfair, when, when you see unfairness out there, it, it's not pretty, right? And so now I think everyone sees a taste of it. The question is, you know, like years and years. How do you remedy that? How do you remedy it?